Hello, my name is Robert and welcome to third module in the course where we are learning about business strategies. And in this particular module, we are discussing uh, generic competitive strategies. Later on during the module, we'll go through interactive business strategies. So before we begin with competitive or interactive strategies, we need to make clear and have a definition of what strategic business unit is. Let's go for the definition. Strategic business unit supplies goods or services for a distinct domain of activity. So I think it's quite simple to imagine strategic business unit if we have small organization. For instance, we are a restaurant which have seven employees. Well, we are one strategic business unit because we address certain domain of activity. We address the same customers and so on and so on. However, it becomes much more complicated when we talk about large organizations with, say, 10,000 employees, and we try to identify strategic business unit in there. Well, first of all, why is it so important to identify some strategic business units? Well, there are three reasons. First of all, SBUs, or strategic business units, help us to decentralize the initiative into smaller units. So if we imagine that we are a car producer, if we have the strategic business units well defined, we are able to decentralize our business. We are able to say, hey guys, you are going to take care about the production of our cars. You guys are going to take care about the sales. So you see, we are able to decentralize this our huge domain of activity. Second point, well, SBUs or strategic business units will be able to serve different needs in various markets where we operate. So if we keep the example of car manufacturer, we are producing cars maybe in one location, but we are selling it on uh, in three different markets, three different countries. Each of these three different countries is going to have different needs. So for instance, if we sell the cars on India market, well, the consumers there are going to be more price sensitive than on some other market, maybe. And you see, we need to construct the strategic business units in the way so that they will serve and address the needs of particular markets. Third point, if we have strategic business units well-defined, we support the idea of accountability. If you have larger organizations, again, it's quite hard for top management or corporate management to see whether some activity within our organization is doing well or it is not doing so well. If we say, okay, you guys are a strategic business unit, these are your goals, this is what I want you to achieve, and if we do so, then we can control very well whether this business unit has achieved its goals or not. So we look at our Chinese market, our India market, and we are able to say, hey, Chinese market was not performing so well this year. The market in India was performing very well. So accountability, especially in larger organizations, is quite the key. All right, so we went through the definition of strategic business unit, and we have discussed three different reasons why definition of strategic business unit is so important. Now, I have already mentioned to you that it's not so easy to find strategic business unit, especially in larger organizations. Now, if we are supposed to do so and, and create this strategic business unit, how can we go forward? How can we do it? Well, there are two ways. We can look at so-called market-based criteria. So we look at the market uh, that we serve and we try to sort of reason backwards towards our organization and say, huh, this group of employees, this unit is serving this particular market. And so I can call this group of employees as a strategic business unit because they serve particular market. Or I can go the other way around and I can have capabilities based criteria. So I will differentiate my strategic business unit in a way that they possess same strategic capabilities. So for instance, one unit is producing cars, the other unit is selling the cars. So they clearly have different strategic capabilities. So they are going to be separated as strategic business units. So we have the definition of strategic business unit. We have the reasons why it is so important. And we also have two different ways how we can define strategic business units if we are especially larger organization. 
Now we move forward as we would like to really get to some generic competitive strategies. But first of all, we need to understand the concept of competitive advantage and what a ad competitive actually means. Well, I have a nice definition for you. Competitive strategy is concerned with how a strategic business unit, you see we have it here, achieves competitive advantage in its domain of activity. In turn, competitive advantage is about how an SBU creates value for its users both greater than the cost of supplying them and superior to the rival of SBU. Now, you see, we have competitive advantage in here. The, we can split this term into two parts. In order to be competitive, we need to sort of uh, provide minimum viable quality and minimum viable value for the customer. So if we are producing cars, in order to be competitive, our car needs to have four wheels, need to be able to be uh, uh, used on roads and needs to drive at least 200 kilometers on one uh, gas stop or something like that. So you see, those are the minimum requirements. If we fulfill them, then we can call ourselves competitive. Now, the other part of the term, advantage. When do we achieve advantage? Well, if we are better than our competitors. So we look at the other car manufacturers and think about, hmm, are we providing greater value than them? If we do so, then we achieve not only that we are competitive, but that we have competitive advantage. So now we explain this term. What is a competitive advantage? Now, Understanding what the strategic business unit is and understanding what the competitive advantage is, we can turn again to Mr. Porter and his great model where he describes generic competitive strategies. We are finally getting there, what I promised you in the beginning of this video. So let's see how can we define the generic competitive strategies thanks to our knowledge of competitive advantage and a strategic business unit. Here you see the model made by Porter. On the vertical axis, we have competitive scope. Company either focuses on broad target, sometimes called generalist, or a narrow target, sometimes called specialist. On the horizontal axis, we see a source of competitive advantage. This can be either lower cost or differentiation. Now we see three different strategies. At first, if we have broad target and lower costs, we go for cost leadership. If we are differentiated and have broad target, we are doing differentiation. Finally, if we have narrow target, we will have focus strategy. Now, it depends whether we have lower cost or differentiation to whether we will be cost focused or differentiation focused. And this model, this matrix that we have just discussed is going to be all over our upcoming videos because you see we have the three main uh, generic competitive strategies described here and we are going to talk in detail about each one of these in the upcoming videos. So that is all for this video where I wanted to introduce you to the generic competitive strategies and I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos.